Hello and welcome. My name is Ariel Porillas. I'm the director of product marketing here at Danda State of Visualization. And today I'm excited to share with you some of the new innovations in Danda's BI. We will spend most of our time today within the application using different use cases, highlighting the benefits of our new enhancements. We will leave time for questions, so please type those questions in the GoToWebinar questions panel as those come along, and I promise to answer all of those today or in a follow-up email after this webinar. In addition, please remember that this webinar, like all of our webinars, is recorded, so you will get access to this recording as well. Now, just before we jump into any new enhancements of Dance BI, I wanted to stress again the main reasons for our customers to choose us. I do realize that many of you on the call today are existing customers of Dance BI, but I think this is important to remember in order to understand the motivation of our new enhancements and our future enhancements as well. Dance BI is the most flexible BI platform. Our customers' ability to create a unique BI experience that works exactly as they and their users want it to work is at the core of the platform. This is true to both the ability to customize and adapt to the business requirements using the built-in functionality and the ability to go beyond and use scripts or API-based extensions to further extend an integrated solution. This flexibility is best demonstrated with our innovative visualizations, which are not only rich or unique, but also designed to be extremely interactive, allowing our users to quickly understand their performance and dive deeper into the root causes and required actions. We will definitely spend time today on some of those new visual enhancements. In addition to those two points, the ability to use the flexibility and deploy a solution across your entire enterprise or even externally is another important design consideration we took for Dance BI. This was done in the attempt of increasing the impact your solution can make by having it adopted by more and more users. Our technology, coupled with our experience in the data visualization space and the tight support we provide, is what really enables our clients to use Dandas and solve real-world problems. Version 3 of Dance BI is another great step towards enabling more people to access and understand data faster. Like any other major release of Dance BI, it is packed with many new functionalities designed by the bright minds of our R&D team with our customer needs in mind. Version 3 is all about your visual data analytics experience. Whether you are a business data consumer or an advanced data analyst, version 3 has something for you. It includes major innovations focused on three main categories providing faster ways to explore your data, new smart visualizations to better explain it, and more options to access and share it so it can be easily adopted by more and more users. Let's get started with the first category and dive into the demos. Faster data exploration. As our business moves faster, it is critical for us to move even faster when it comes to exploring and analyzing our data. In order to do that, we focused a great deal of our efforts in making sure analysts can start their analysis using the data they want and only then gradually add more data into their analysis. This is done with on-the-fly join, even from different data structures. We also added options for the consumers to easily interact with the data and personalize the data selection so they can easily revisit those again in the future. Let's see it in action. This is the home screen of Dance BI. For those of you who are familiar with it, you can probably notice that we've changed the Explore Data button from blue to orange. The reason for that is that for developers and power users, we now take them through a dedicated path using the new metrics of designer to create an analysis, explore data, and then move into a new dashboard and create a full design that they can share with other users. Let's view this new path. If I click on the Explore Data button, it will take me to the metrics of designer, and you can see that in the metrics of designer, we've also added new options. For example, the ability to drag and drop files directly from your desktop onto the browser, such as Excel files or CSV files, and analyze that directly. You can also create connections to other data sources you have in your organization. And most importantly, you can use an existing data structure that was already defined in the system for you. If you use that option, you can see the list of existing data connectors. You can choose that specific list or focus on a specific table or view. Or you can expand the list of existing data models, data cubes in Dance BI, and again, use your own or one that was shared with you by another user. For example, here, I'm going to use a product sales. Select that data cube, and you can now automatically see the sales amount measure, which is the default measure for that data cube, populated with the sum value for that specific measure. On the right-hand side, this is the biggest change that we've added to the metrics of designer, allowing you to focus just on that specific data set. So when you look at the Explore panel, you can see the list of measures and focus on the dimensions available to you for that specific data cube. So here, for example, I can easily drag and drop new dimensions, 
and just add them into my analysis simply by using the drag and drop. Now what you can see here is of course the option to see the information and easily interact with it. There's no need to switch back between edit mode and view mode. I can easily expand and collapse the different elements or use the right click context menu or the toolbar at the top to do my different analysis. Now, part of the new additions that we've added to the interactivity of version 3 is the option to focus on a specific combinations of dimensions without having to expand all of them up front. This is important whenever you want to have the option to drill down into a different dimension, but without having to scroll for the entire list. So for example here, I can just right click my product category dimension and use the new option here to collapse all of my members under this selection. And now you can see the data aggregate to the month level and the content level with no aggregation breakdown to the product category. But I can of course easily access that simply by expanding my continent level and viewing the breakdown under the continent as well as under product categories for that selection. Now of course once you collapse all you can also right click and expand all to see all the elements expanded again. Now these new interactions of collapse all and expand all allows you to easily focus on specific selections of data points without having to scroll for a very long list of data in your tables or visualizations and easily see that data point that you only want to focus on. Now I can quickly move some of my uh, dimensions into the uh, slicer category under my data analysis panel and maybe focus on some new additions we've added in version 3. So as I mentioned before, using an existing data structure allows you to focus just on specific data cube with that list of measures and dimension of the data cube, and that applies as well for native data structures. So if you were to choose a table or a specific file from a list of data connectors, the same would occur on that occasion. But what if you wanted to join that data cube with another data cube or with a different data structure? Here you can go back to the Explore panel simply by clicking on that button at the bottom, and right here you can still see all different elements available to you. Now by expanding this full Explore panel and viewing all data objects available to you, what you can do is you can now drag and drop and join on the fly or blend on the fly different data models that you have available to you in the system. Doing that in previous version of Dance BI was possible, but only on top of native data structure, on top of data connectors only. In version 3, you can now do it on top of existing data models, on top of existing data cubes that you have available to you in the system. So here, for example, I'm working with the product sales data cube, but perhaps I want to join with my own data cube that I've created in my own project. So for example, here, if I go into the sales profit, I can maybe drag and drop the gross profit column and now add a new column from a different data model onto my uh, metrics of designer. And you can see a Dance BI on the fly knows how to join those different data models based on common dimensions. Of course, now I can interact with these data sources together as if they were one data source. I can do things like add a formula and maybe subtract one measure from the other simply by clicking on the different options here and creating a new column, which is a computer column for those two different data so sources together. We'll go back to this functionality later and demonstrate some more options around that, but this is really powerful when it, whenever you, you want to have an, in your analysis a blend of different data sources together in one location, in one metric set, showing you the results of the calculation across all of those different data sources. Let me quickly uh, remove those two measures and move on to a new addition. Let's talk about some of the new ways we've added to better help you understand the information and data you're looking at. So we always had a revisualize option allowing you to quickly focus not only on understanding what data structure you have in a table structure, but also better understanding and viewing this information using the appropriate type of visualization that works for your data. So I'm going to revisualize this table into a bar chart showing me the trend across the different months using different bars. But the important addition here is the ability to now select different data points from your visuals or from your tables and quickly see some statistics around those different data point selections. For example, here I can maybe choose all the months until the uh, uh, month of January 2014. And at the bottom here, under the status bar, what you can now see is what we call instant statistics. You can now see the sum, the average, minimum, maximum, the count, and the distinct count for the selection you've just applied on your data. Very easily, simple to the way you used to do it in Excel, you can now see these, those statistics across the different data point selections without having to create a formula, without having to filter your information, simply by using your cursor, selecting the different data points, and viewing those statistics on top of the status on bar at the bottom. Now, in addition, other ways you may want to explore your information is again using the Visualize option, using a new addition we have in the Industry Visualize toolbar. What you can see now is that we have a new formula on top of the uh, uh, list of visualization that allows me to add a trend line to my chart. Using this add trend line, I can quickly add a forecast now 
and see how this expected sales amount will look like in the future. I can basically create a prediction for my sales amount. Now, this option was available in previous version of Dance BI, but it did require a formula. It required a little bit of understanding of which input elements you want to add to that formula. Right now in Dance BI version 3, a simple click with the revisualize option, and you can add a forecast into the future. So let me rename this metric set, and I'm going to call this sales amount forecast. And correct this typo here. And the last thing I want to do with this analysis is now move on to the next phase, to the dashboard creation, and use this analysis in order to a, um, maybe create a full dashboard and share that dashboard with other users. So to do that, instead of going back to my menu and creating a new dashboard, I'm going to use this new button here that's going to allow me to add this metric set directly into a new dashboard. So I'm going to click on that. And what, what I'm going to get now is a new dashboard with that metric set available to me within that dashboard. I can now resize it, position it, and style it the way I need it as part of my full dashboard. For example, part of the additions I want to have with this formula is a filter. So I'm going to add a range date filter. And you can see it automatically connects to my um, visualization. And a second filter, in this case, a member filter. And I'm going to connect that to my country dimension. Place it here at the top. And I'm going to just uh, align my elements together. What I want to show you next is a neat option we've added to the filter control allowing users to save their selections and repeatedly use it across different occasions where they'll be viewing this dashboard. So let me switch here to view mode and open my filter control. And of course, as always, I can search for different filter values or just expand the hierarchy and select from here. Let's say I'm the manager of the uh, uh, European mainland the, uh, continent, so I can choose France and Germany and filter my chart accordingly. Now, up until version 3, this selection will automatically be saved for you. So the next time you log into this dashboard, you'll be able to see that selection by default. You can, of course, bookmark this dashboard and always access that selection. But let's say you have multiple selections in your data, or that selection may be useful for someone else. What I can do now in version 3 is open the filter control menu and save this selection as what we call a talking. Using this option, you'll open that say, a dialog here, which looks slightly different depending on the type of user you're using. So in this case, I'm logged onto the system as a user who's both a developer and an administrator. So I can provide a caption. And then because I'm an administrator, I can decide if this token is going to be associated with all the users in the system, what we call a global token. So all the users when accessing this dashboard will be able to see it. Or if this is going to be associated with a specific tenant, if this is a multi-tenant environment. And finally, I can also dedicate to a specific user. Let's say this token is only applicable for a specific account. I can choose which account will see that token, for example, myself, and have that token available the next time I open this dashboard. If I log on as a standard user, I will see the same dialog, but only with the option to associate this token with my own, myself, with my personal account. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go back to the uh, all selection. And what you can see now, if I open this menu, is I have now a new token selection available for me, allowing me to quickly go back to that predefined selection that I need to reuse over and over again. Where do I manage those token selections? Of course, under my profile, so I'm going to open my profile a menu, and on the bottom here, there's a new token menu available to me, allowing me to control what list of tokens I have. I can, of course, delete them, and I can, as an administrator, create even more advanced tokens, which will use scripts or more advanced logic to create a combination of dynamic selections for different users. Very neat functionality, allowing you to quickly save your selections and reuse them over and over again. Now, I did promise you to go back to the auto-join functionality I demonstrated earlier and explains a bit more of what happens on the back end. Now, this auto-join functionality can, of course, be used by power users when they want to blend and join different data sources and data models together. But it can also be used by de developers that create data cubes and wants to reuse that data cube model across a different data cube as well. So for example, here, I'm going to go and create a new data cube. And of course, like always, in any data cube, I can just drag and drop data from the uh, right-hand side and bring it into my data cube model. In this case, I'm going to use a new file that I have uh, uh, drag and drop into my uh, system here. And you can see now on the list of data connectors, I have that uh, connection available to me. Drag and drop the uh, spreadsheet and create my data cube model. So this is a new file that I have available. But what if I wanted to join that file with an existing data model that I've already created? I already have the logs defined. I don't want to redefine it in this data cube. What I can do is just expand the data cube folder. And from here, just drag and drop that the existing data cube I already have available. 
And you can see now a new transformation, which is a data cube transformation, allowing me to bring in a model into a new model and use that and join it together with the new data points I want to bring in. So for example, here I'm going to join that, define using drag and drop that I want to join it using the date dimension. And now I'm blending in both my Excel spreadsheet and an existing data model in a new data model I can then reuse and share with other users in the system. So very uh, quick way for you uh, developers out there to uh, go ahead and reuse existing data models across different data structures you want to create and expose for your customers. So with that, uh, we've finished the uh, first demo of the uh, uh, session today, focusing on the uh, fast data exploration. Hopefully you've seen some of the quick new ways we've added you to uh, allow you focus on specific data points you want to explore, and as a consumer, better understand that with different statistics and uh, selections you can personalize. And most importantly, remember that new path that we have available now, allowing you to move very quickly from your data into a dashboard using the uh, metrics of designer in a dedicated way. Moving on, what I want to talk about next is uh, smarter visualizations. In our continuous effort to provide advanced new ways to visualize the data, we have now added new smart visualizations. They are called smart visualizations because they will actually generate or calculate the required data to plot those visuals without forcing you to prepare your information up front or massage it in a structure that, requires for this, that is required for those visualizations. This includes new charts such as histograms or waterfall charts or faster ways to create Pareto chart, but also a unique relationship diagram that allows you to visualize big or complex data relations. Let's go back to the SBI to better understand the appropriate use cases. Okay, so the uh, first visual visualization I'd like to focus on is the uh, histogram chart. Let me create a new dashboard here and show you what I can do with the histogram chart. So on the right hand side, I can expand my data connectors. There's already a predefined data connection here to show me my call center waiting time. So this is basically organizing information by different calls using the uh, call ID. There's over 5,000 calls in the, uh, coming into my data center for this uh, time period. And I can drag in the wait time as well, indicating how long people are willing to wait before they get an answer. So basically the amount of time they wait until they hang up because they don't get an answer. You can see by default it's going to sum that the uh, wait time. I can of course change that aggregation to maybe average it and see what's the average waiting time for my call center uh, answers to be uh, uh, picked up or until they hang up. And I can see it takes about 4.39 minutes until they hang up. So what I want to do next is better analyze this information, get a better sense of what I can do to improve my, uh, my wait time and, and what would be the right threshold I want to focus on in terms of how many agents I need to add and improve the, uh, uh, reduce the wait time and make sure that I have more callers getting answered. Remember, this is an inbound call center, so making sure that more calls get in, of course, uh, helps my business to, uh, um, uh, to operate better. So what I can do now is use a new revisualize option. So I'm going to again open the revisualize menu. And what you're going to see here under the uh, formula section is a new option to a uh, next to the calculate box plot to calculate the histogram. So the calculate box plot was available before. Now we've added that new formula to calculate the histogram. So I'm going to click on that. And now what you can see is a new histogram chart created next to my table. And this histogram chart is a great way to bin my data to group it into different uh, um, um, categories, basically groups, based on the number of appearances in each group. So I can see here right now it's by default creating 15 groups for my data. Each group represents basically uh, a minute. And then I can see how many people are waiting, uh, willing to wait until uh, one minute and then they hang up. So I can see there's less than 200 people that are willing to do that. And I can see that, that there's above 1,000 people willing to wait between six to seven minutes until they hang up. So that's great information. Rather bad, I can easily analyze large amount of data, which in, in a table would, would be almost impossible to understand, just using that the revisualize option and going to histogram. Now this histogram, similar to a uh, create a box plot, if I go into the analysis panel, what you'll see here, it's, it's creating a new calculated measure for you. That's why uh, we call it a, uh, a formula visualization. It's actually going to use a new uh, formula, which is the histogram formula. And if I open that formula, you can see what it's using here as an input is the uh, wait time measure in minutes from my table, as well as what we call the bin size parameter. 
Um, and we'll talk about this being size parameter. There's, of course, more parameters, more variables you can add to this formula if you want to. For example, here, I'm going to uh, specify a different format for my axis. So once I added uh, that variable, you can see my axis changing to show a range now. So you can see this is between 0 to 1 minute, between 1 to 2 minutes, and so on and so on. And I can, of course, uh, reapply a different style or just use the, uh, the default styling that the uh, chart will automatically detect for me. The nice thing, like any other formula, you can actually hook up variables to that uh, or filters to those variables that you have available to you in the formula. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to add a parameter, a filter control, to control that bin size parameter and basically create a histogram with a different set of uh, bin sizes. So let me close this formula and go in here into the filter menu and choose a slider filter control. I'm going to position it over here. And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to actually connect the slider filter contr control to this single number variable of my formula. And once I do that, what you'll be able to see is I can now go into the uh, view mode and change the bin size. Maybe I want to have my bin size uh, set to three, um, three minutes. So now I can see the groups organized by zero to three minutes, three to six minutes, six to nine, and so on and so on. Of course, I'm getting less bins. But what I can easily tell now is that if I were to maybe focus on the, uh, on the first day, uh, uh, or sorry, the uh, second two groups, so between 3 to 6 minutes and 6 to 9 minutes, I could actually save more than um, almost 3,500, more than 3,500 uh, uh, calls from hanging up. So if I were to improve and get down the wait time between 0 to 3 minutes, I would actually just lose um, slightly uh, over 1,200 callers by hanging up which is going to be a huge improvement. So that really allows me to plan better the force, the workforce I need for my call center without having to a, um, um, guess or, a, uh, or work just by averages, but actually by being able to see how many people are allocated in each one of my groups, in one, each one of my bins. Let's move on to the next visual, and this is going to be the uh, Pareto chart. We create a new metric set. And I'll use here a data set, which I've a, uh, already uploaded to the system. It's my own personal data set uh, that I've grabbed from a, uh, a website online, showing me the active NBA team's performance. So it will show me uh, information around the actual franchises and how many championships they have, how many games they played, how many wins they had, losses, percentage ratios, division they, uh, victories, and so on and so on. So let me bring in the uh, uh, franchise information, and I can see all the different uh, franchises. I just took the uh, current one, the recent one that we know today as, as they play in the NBA. And I'm going to bring in the number of championships per uh, team, and of course, going to sum it. So you can see this is going backwards 57 years. Great. Now, what's really interesting for me to, to understand is what's the, the breakdown? What's the distribution of those championships across different uh, NBA teams, across different franchises? So a very quick way that the people are used to use who, in order to see distributions is uh, using a pie chart. So I'm just going to revisualize my information and go into a pie, a sunburst chart. And you can see there's a lot of slices here in my pie chart. This is simply because there's a lot of NBA teams that won championships in the past. Not quite easy to uh, read this pie chart, even though it's, it's taking the full screen. Still, a lot of time I would need to spend to really analyze and understand what the uh, distribution I have for this uh, uh, NBA championships. I can improve that slightly by uh, going to uh, one of the interactions, for example, sorting this information by uh, championships. And this will help a little bit to organize this uh, uh, pie chart and make those uh, slices in order. But still, a lot of slices, a lot of uh, uh, hard data points to read. And especially when uh, I have too many uh, data points and I'm starting to lose enough colors to differentiate different slices, it's getting harder and harder to uh, distinguish those different data points. What I can do instead is use the uh, new visualize option and go into the uh, Pareto chart the visualization. So if I use that option, you can now see a new visual providing me a breakdown of the distribution and helping me very quickly focus on that 80-20 rule, Pareto rule. So now I can see that, for example, the, uh, um, uh, if I look at the 79% uh, or almost 80% of the uh, championship uh, cumulative percentage, this covers only six teams in the, in the NBA. So the Celtics, the Lakers, the Bulls, the Spurs, Pistons, and the Heat took over an 80% of the championships. And all the rest of the team are left with a very small amount of championships. And I can, of course, scroll to the right or uh, just use the uh, zoom out option to see the additional teams that never won any uh, championship. This is something that I won't be able to see in a pie chart, but in a Pareto chart, I can still see the, the additional categories, additional, in this case, NBA teams, that are, uh, have a, a value of zero, basically, but are still 
part of my data, which in a pie chart will simply be lost. So a lot of useful information you can get out of a Pareto chart simply by uh, visualizing information using bars to uh, show the uh, percentage and a line chart showing the cumulative percentage across the, uh, the different bars. A good alternative for pie charts, especially if you have more than three or four slices. Okay, so let me quickly rename this metric set into Pareto chart and move on to the next example. So I'm going to create now a new metric set and this is going to be used to create a new type of visualization, in this case, the waterfall chart. Now, the waterfall chart can be used to understand the cumulative effect of a sequence of events. Think of a process that has different transactions in that process, some are positive, some are negative, and you want to see how the cumulative result of that process looks like. So here I'm going to use a data set, which is actually illustrating my office uh, balance. So I'm going to bring in that data uh, uh, file using a spreadsheet that I have available to me on my desktop my offense uh, monthly balance, just going to drag and drop it onto the metrics of designer right here. And this will automatically show me the data I have to, available to me in that file. So it's a simple file showing me different transactions, the amount of that transaction, and the date for it. So the office rental payment, tra transportation payment, and so on and so on. And you can see some are negative, some are positive. I can also change my format here to instead of a, a number to be of a, uh, a currency and get that number and uh, displayed immediately in my, in my table. Now, a very uh, uh, common way to, uh, to visualize this transaction would be a bar chart. So if I were to visualize this to a bar chart, I can actually see the value of each one of my transactions. And I'll just remove the uh, transaction description onto my column. And I can now even use that uh, on top of the, the labels of each one of the bars, showing me what that transaction is. And I can see the different transactions. Unfortunately, what the bar chart won't give me is the status of my uh, balance after each one of those transa transactions. So I can see my office rental payment is a negative one, transportation payment is a negative one, uh, the bonus deposit is a negative one, my customer renewals is a positive one, sales activity is negative, new sales positive, but again, hard for me to tell what is the current balance of my office. So for that, what we can do now is go again to the revisualize option and revisualize this to a waterfall chart. And what this will give me is what people often refer to as a, as a bridge chart because of those connecting lines or that waterfall chart showing me that process over time. So I can see I'm starting from zero and I'm going down to minus 2,000 and above 500 and then uh, even a uh, uh, more negative value. And then here I have two transactions on that specific date, the bonuses deposit as well as my salary deposits. And then I have some positive ones like uh, my customer renewals, another negative one, another positive one. Now notice what you can see now is that it's actually taking into consideration the uh, uh, the time of the month where that transaction occurred. So it's actually showing me the right spacing between that day, those different transactions. I can also change this to a categorical axis and now get those with an equal spacing and showing me those just those, those values without taking time into consideration. So what I can do next is maybe apply some formatting to this chart to better understand what the uh, what was a positive and what is a negative transaction. For that, I'll just use the states, and I'm, I'm going to add a new state here, and this is going to be my balance state. I'm going to create a positive one, and I'm going to specify that if the value is greater than the value of zero, that's going to be a positive state, and the negative one will be if the value is less than zero. So I can now click on this visual button and very quickly now you can see which one of the transactions are negative in red and which one are positive in green. Now I can of course customize my states. So for example I can go into my positive one and say well you know what I don't want to have that solid green. I want to have a linear color and I want to have it going upwards. And maybe my uh, end color would be a blue color. So I can see now I'm starting from a negative value going all the way to a positive one. And I can do the same, of course, for the negative colors. Maybe choose, again, a linear gradient. Usually linear gradients are not a good practice, uh, but in this case, it's actually good, uh, a good example where you can use them, simply because it helps you illustrate that process. It also helps you distinguish between two different transactions that occur in the same day. So I can see here I have both my bonds deposits and my salary deposit in the same day. And I can now easily distinguish those with that linear gradient effect. So a very good way to visualize process changes over time when you want to see the cumulative result 
of those different uh, uh, steps in your process, in this case transactions, as they affect your overall total amount. I'm going to rename this to a waterfall chart. And now we can move on to our next example. The next visualization is a really interesting one. I think a lot of you are going to be excited about that one. I heard a lot of great feedback already coming from our beta customers about it, and I'm really excited to show it to you. So let's move on and create a new metric set and explore a little bit the relationship diagram. So the relationship diagram is really there to help you understand relationships between different data points, um, often referred to as nodes and, and uh, links or edges, basically trying to understand what is the connection between those different data points especially when we come to a, uh, a scenario where we have complex relationships or a lot of data points, almost into big data scenarios, where we can't really make sense of that with traditional charts. So let's see an example. I'm going to go into my data connectors here and open a connection here to my client activities prior to purchase. Basically what I want to see here is what did my clients do, what type of activities they did before they acquired my software. So for example here, I can drag in the activities. And you can see different types of activities I have. I have a, um, an article they may have read online. Maybe they've uh, read a blog that we wrote. Uh, they participate in one of the conferences we, uh, we present in, had a face-to-face -face meeting with us, online meetings. Um, maybe uh, they read online reviews from other customers or a contacted one of our references. Maybe they uh, got us via Twitter or via a webinar that we did like this one. And what I'm going to add here is the uh, client ID as well next to it. So now I can see the breakdown regards which activity the client participated in. And I have this unknown group under the activity. I'm just going to remove that unknown group and just focused on known activities that I had clients participating in. So as you can see, there's a lot of activities here and a lot of customers participating in each activities. It's really hard for me to understand what's the overall picture. Using this new relationship diagram, I can visualize my data and very quickly get a breakdown of the different activities and the clients participating in those activities. So quite amazing. Very quickly, I can now see that the top activity is actually the online meeting. And the list I use activities is the uh, uh, conferences. A uh, list of my customers came from an actual conference where I have uh, participated and presented my product. Now, right now, what I can see here is all the activities connected and then the different clients coming from those activities. This is the way I'm binding the information, connecting this information to this visual. But if I go into my visualization option here, I can now change those configurations and maybe have a different view of my data. So for example, what I can do here is I can move my activities as my target and have my client as my source. So basically what I'm doing now, I'm creating what we call a force directed graph. So you can see here basically the different activities and those are being linked to all the different customers. And I'm basically creating a lot of connections between those, basically a path that each customer went through. So for example, I can see that customer ID 27 and customer ID 40, these ones only had to use one activity, only a face-to-face -face meeting to acquire our product. Other customers, of course, had many more activities um, that they used before they went and moved on to a acquire product. Now, the other thing is that because this is a force directed graph, I can see the most used activities right in the center, like the online meetings and the uh, online reviews that they, our customer read. And I can also see connections or uh, relations or how close the different activities are. So I can see that customers that are comfortably uh, doing a deeper dive online read some of our articles and also participate in some of our webinars. Other customers that they are maybe more used to a social media type of buying, they just use bl uh, blogs or tweets to a, um, view a, the, the activities that they, uh, Dundas or another company provided to, a, um, to access data. Now, of course, this is fictitious data, but as you can see, there's a clear view here of what type of activities are close together and what type of customers are using those. Now, let me add this uh, relationship diagram into a dashboard and show you a few more things I can do with this relationship diagram. Let me expand a little bit the size here. And I want to add another metric set into this relationship diagram. So I'm going to add a new one right here. And again, drag and drop the same data set I just used, the client's activities prior to purchase. What I'm going to use here is the activity on my rows. And as my measure, I'm going to add a count measure. So I'm going to click to add the built-in count measure in the system. And you can see that now it's going to automatically color the data in my uh, in my relationship diagram. Let me just uh, zoom in in this a little bit so you can see it slightly better. 
And the interesting thing here is now is that I can easily distinguish between the activities and the, um, um, the different client IDs. What I also want to do is add another element to my visualization, which is going to be focusing on the, uh, um, not, just the um, not just the size, but also the color. So I'm going to go into my metric set here and add the count measure into my size. So now I can see how many customers actually use the different activities. I can see again, the least used one is a conference one, the most used one is the online meeting based on the size. If I go into the properties, I can also change the way I'm coloring my different data points. I don't need four different colors for the different activities because that doesn't mean much. I'm just gonna have one color to represent the activities and then one color to represent my client IDs. So here you can see a relationship diagram showing me very clearly what kind of activities are being used the most, what activities are close together, so which customers are likely to use one activity or another. Maybe that's a strategy I want to use in my marketing activities in terms of the way I want to push those activities to uh, my different customers, and also what kind of path those customers are following. Now lastly, of course, like any other visualization, this can be interactive, so I can definitely set up interactions in here, and maybe I'm going to set up a hover over interaction that will allow me to view another view on top of this visual based on the context I'm clicking on. So here I want to focus on my client activities, and I'm going to set up a certain size, certain dimension for this uh, hover over a dashboard to show, and I'm going to set up the parameters mapping as well. So I'm going to specify that if I'm hovering over a specific client ID, I want to be able to see the same client ID in my destination dashboard. So now, if I hover over, for example, customer one, this will now pop up or hover over for me another dashboard showing me the activities for that the, uh, client. So I can now see that the client one participated in all those activities, the article, the blog, face-to-face, -face, online meetings, and so on and so on. And of course, this can be used with uh, uh, additional information. It doesn't have to be the exact same data I see here. I can maybe show when did the customer participate in that activity, what was his feedback. Maybe I can do some uh, sen sentiment analysis and, um, and, and maybe use that on top of the links, on top of the connecting lines between the different nodes to plot that as well. Often that, that's going to be used maybe in a social network type of diagram if you're trying to plot Twitter data and how your customers are tweeting between them and, and what's their sentiment across that. A lot of interesting use cases can be applied to the relationship diagram. Really excited to see what you can do with it. This is really, uh, I think, a, a new and innovative way for you to explore the data relationships hidden in your uh, massive amounts of data. So with that, we've uh, uh, covered the uh, second part of our demo, the uh, smarter visualization, and we move on to the uh, accelerating user adoption. So this is the last category of innovation I'd like to cover today, and it is about the new tools that we develop to accelerate the adoption by all types of users. Adoption is still the most important key performance indicator there is when it comes to BI tools. Making sure more users at all levels and all skill sets are comfortable using the tools is key to your organization BI success. Some of the new tools we've developed are designed to ensure users can access the data as they need it. This can be done by either accessing the same views on any device with a great responsive experience, or by exporting it into other tools like Excel with more context and formatting alignment. Other tools are more focused on enablement by educating new and advanced users on the options available with the platform, allowing them to imagine new ways they can put Dance BI to use. Here is a live demo showing some of the new tools. So the responsive mode, the first one that they, I'd like to get started with, and, and I think one of the most exciting uh, or innovative features we've added in the version 3 that a lot of our users are looking for. Um, a responsive mode is really a way that allows you to design and create a single dashboard in a way that operates similar to, to the way modern websites operate today, where a lot of elements will shift their location based on the uh, available screen size that you have. So you can design it once and basically use it across different devices, whether it's a tablet, a uh, smartphone, and of course, uh, a laptop or a desktop. Now, the, the Dynos BI already has the option to scale and resize elements on the screen. So definitely, in, in previous version of Dynos BI, you were also able to access on mobile devices and use uh, actions like pinch to zoom and, and other interactions to view the information uh, on the different devices. But definitely, the responsive mode is, is a very uh, uh, smart and interesting way to go about it and still be able to access all the different types of interactions you can access on desktop, desktop and laptop exactly the same way as you would on tablet and, and smartphone as well. So let's see uh, uh, the example of how this works. So here's a dashboard 
designed to use this responsive resize mode. And what you can see that right now, this is the uh, uh, dashboard spread out across a, a, my desktop screen, which is uh, with a width of uh, 1920. So quite uh, quite wide, a lot of space to position the different elements. And as you can see, a lot of elements are pushed to the first row. And then there's a bottom here, a line chart showing me across the entire uh, width of the screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to exit my full screen mode with my browser and start resizing my, uh, my screen size. So you can see here, as I move along the, the width, you can see on the top right of the browser the current width that I'm, uh, that I'm using. So as I'm changing that width, you'll notice that the elements are shifting either up or down based on the available screen size. So as I change the width, notice that now I'm using a 3 by 3 setup for this dashboard. Now I can also use other interactions on, on my dashboard to even control the way I'm visualizing different elements. So for example, with this specific width, I have enough space to show my navigation menu with the management dashboard they currently selected and also the option to access the operations dashboard and the dispatch dashboard and my help button. And I also have the option to change that as I go even smaller. So for example, as I, as I go under a, a certain uh, width, for example, in this case, I've set it to under 1,020 pixels, to switch into this hamburger menu people I used to use when they access the, the websites on mobile devices. So for example, here, I can just tap on that and see the different options available to me with this uh, hamburger menu versus laying it out on the screen where I won't have enough space to show it properly. And this can, of course, resize all the way down to a, uh, a standard smartphone screen. And I can, of course, swipe down and see more and more options available to me and still use the different interactions, tooltips, clicks, and so on to view the, the information the same way as I would use it on a desktop or laptop. So very exciting new resizing mode, the, the responsive mode. I'm really looking forward to see what type of dashboards you can create with it and share it across multiple devices with minimal efforts. Now, the other uh, uh, options that we've added is a, a new export engine. So I'll go back to uh, Dance BI. And what I want to show you here is our new export engine. So we always have the option in Dance BI to export into different formats. So you can go into a, uh, a PDF, Excel, PowerPoint, images, or share your dashboard as a link. But what we, add, we add now in uh, version 3 is uh, we basically rebuilt our export engine to make it A, faster, but also uh, much more aligned to your context, to your uh, current formatting of your, of your dashboards, of your designs. So you can see here my, uh, my style for this table. I have some states applied here. I can even add some different comments on my uh, dashboard elements. For example, for France, I can see the order quantity is low in August. Maybe this is an issue because of the uh, summer vacation. I can say low orders due to summer and apply this comment. And I, I have different styling available on this chart. I can also maybe uh, filter on a certain range. So maybe I want to focus just on the 2013. So I'm going to apply that selection from start to end of the uh, 2013. And maybe I want to focus just on specific countries. I'll focus again on France and Germany. And I will create this specific report. Now, when I export this to Excel in order to further manipulate that or share that with other users, what I'm going to get now is the few more options that I didn't have before. For example, the option to include my parameter values. So checking this option will basically plot in my Excel report the current values I've used when I've exported this, uh, um, this dashboard. And of course, this is also interesting uh, if you use the schedule exporting. That way, you know exactly what value was used whenever that schedule was created. A few more options available here. I can, of course, go back to the previous export where I exported without the styles. But what I want to show you here is how the new export which is, again, very fast, it's going to allow you to actually see and maintain the same format that I have in my dashboard. So here I'm going to compare them side by side. And you can see, here's my dashboard. Here's my Excel sheet. And you can see it's a very similar styling. At the bottom here, I have my date and my country parameter values. So I can see exactly what values were used when this data was exported. And I can also see the comments that was added by different users on the dashboard. So maintaining the different uh, styles that you have in the tables, maintaining the uh, or providing you the parameter values and give you faster exports, that's what this new export engine will give you, together with a new options to uh, uh, export images for scorecards as well. So a lot of options added uh, in the uh, version 3 around the export, definitely helping users to better collaborate and use the, uh, the data, not only within the SBI, but in other tools they're comfortable using whenever they share that with other colleagues or want to further analyze on their own.
Now, the next day, uh, set of tools I want to focus on, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, a bit more educational tools. So we have some tools for beginners, for new users to the system, and we have some tools for advanced users. Let's start with the uh, new, uh, uh, new tools for um, people that are just getting started with Dynas BI and want to, to quickly understand how to use the system, what's in it, what's available. So when you install Dynas BI as a new user, what you'll notice is that it's going to ask you, do you want to use the Getting Started with Dynas BI project? So this is actually a new product that you can deploy while installing the application. And the first dashboard you're going to land on when you open this, uh, this project is the uh, Start Here dashboard. And what this is going to give you is basically a quick walkthrough of Dynas BI from the start, and then moving on to how you can analyze the, uh, the data in Dynas BI, how you can create a, uh, different dashboards, interact with your, your information, and then share it with your colleagues. And you're also going to notice that under each one of those steps, there's going to be some, of course, images and explanation in terms of what you can see from uh, how you can use that specific step. So for example, under the uh, Analyze step, you can see here there's a set of uh, screens explaining what you need to do in each step to basically create your metric set. Now you can just move them forward one by one, or you can just uh, play this video and see those steps in, in sequence and uh, pause whenever you need to and whenever you want to focus on a specific step. Now once you, uh, uh, once you realize the, uh, um, how to use that the specific step of the flow, you can definitely move on to the creation and interact with different dashboards, understand how to create the, the dashboards and, and different elements here, and do the same for the interactions and shares. So a lot of great content and material here helping the user understand how to a uh, uh, how they can use Dance BI, what type of interactions are available, and also how they can set up uh, those interactions very very quickly with uh, a quick tutorial, a quick uh, run through of those different steps. So this is a built-in walkthrough of the application Dance BI, and with version three you can also set this as a default landing dashboard for different user groups. So for example, if you create a power user groups in your system and you want this power user group to always see this dashboard when they, uh, uh, they land, when they open Dynas BI for the first time, you can set that as their uh, default uh, homepage, and users can use that after a certain while once they, uh, uh, they feel that they, they're comfortable with the different steps here, they can change the default home screen to a different uh, a dashboard maybe or a different location they want to land on, and that can be done individually. So every user can change it on its own, and use that never change, it will still be uh, using the default landing dashboard as part of the uh, grouping default landing dashboard that you've defined as an administrator. The other tool that they, I want to talk about is the uh, scripting library that we've added for advanced users. Um, this is a very exciting tool for all those uh, scripters out there that wants to uh, learn more about how to use scripting in NAS BI, how to access the API, how to extend the application with different options. So this script library is available uh, and integrated into our support data documentation. It's basically providing you live samples, live scripts uh, using the different options in Dance BI to allow you to uh, understand concepts and, and leverage those for your own specific needs. So for example, in this case, in this script library uh, sample, what I'm using here is a deep3.js visualization. It's called a Sankey diagram. And I basically embed that into my dashboard um, using um, a, a set of scripts, basically uh, uh, inserting my Sunkey diagram d3.js uh, code into an HTML label on my dashboard. Now there's of course detailed documentation about it, so you can see here the uh, documentation, you can click on that. You can also show the, uh, the script and, and access that directly from here and understand what interaction on the dashboard we place the script on. And you can also see what other uh, related script samples we have available to you in that same uh, spirit, so you can use those uh, maybe to, uh, again, learn new options and understand how you can maybe further extend your deployment. Ultimately, on the top right-hand side, you can also download a sample and get a Dynas BI export file, import that into, into your system. Usually, it doesn't require any data setup. It's, it's all based on the uh, um, internal data elements that they, uh, we created, allowing you to easily replicate that in your environment and copy the same logic for your own specific needs. So a great tool for those developers out there that wants to further script and uh, enhance their, uh, their knowledge about the Dynas BI. I hope you enjoy the demos and are excited about trying some of the new options. In the meantime, I do want to share with you a path moving forward. These are the four main areas of focus in order to support our vision. The first, as always, will continue to focus on being a leader on the data visualization side of things. This will include more visualization enhancements, 
easier access to source data for reporting and analysis, and a simpler ways to customize information you see on your dashboard. Second, we will continue to improve Dance BI embeddability, giving users more seamless access to the numbers they need right in the environments they need it. You can also expect more innovation around our analytical, analytical capabilities, allowing you to easily analyze your data without having to solely rely on data scientists. And finally, we're going to keep on listening to our customers. This may be a good place to mention our Dynamics user program, the Cube. If you are an existing Dynamics user and not yet using the Cube, we strongly recommend you give it a try. This is a great place to learn and exchange new ideas with Dynamics team and other Dynamics users and do it in a fun way. If you haven't joined and want to know more about it, please contact your account executive or just email info at and we'll provide you with the info you need to get started. So what's next? As we are getting close to open up the floor for some questions, if you are interested to know more about version 3, you can access our new documentation or contact your account executive and organize a specific discussion. If you are new to Dance BI, you are welcome to contact our team in order to get a live walkthrough or simply try it yourself. At this point, I'll open up the floor for some questions. So if you haven't asked any questions yet, please feel free to use the GoToWebinar questions panel and type in your question, and I'll try to address all of those in the remaining time.